this is just going to be a quick little video to show you how the um, auto applique works in the Bernina software version 5. Uh, first we need to get a picture so click on the load picture icon and you'll need to go to my designs um, I happen to have moved mine so yours should be on your C drive unless you've moved them and you want to go into the artwork and the file I'm look, looking for is not a bitmap, so I'm going to do the files of type and choose all picture files. And just because I want something very simple for this, I'm going to choose elephant and open. At this point, you would want to resize it to fit into whatever hoop you're going to be using. If you will hold down the shift key while you drag the control handles, it will resize from the center. He will work now. so. Next, I switch to the design view. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up my object properties for the applique before I start. So if you click on the object properties icon and then the applique tab, which you can't see. The applique tab, you have several options in here. Um, right now, it has defaulted to a satin stitch. When the satin stitch is selected, you can use a tack down. What the tack down is, is a zigzag that goes around the edge of the fabric before the cover stitch goes on the applique. You can also have a placement line and that will stitch out an outline before you place your fabric down showing where it's going to go in the hoop. You can put a cutting line and that is if you are going to put your fabric down on top of your base fabric and have the machine stitch around it again and then cut up close to that line. Um, if you are going to use the feature in the print where you can print your patterns and pre-cut your pieces for the applique, you wouldn't need that cutting line. I'm going to take it out for right now. Um, down here, if you'll notice, the offset for the cover stitch when it is satin is in the center. Um, that's the default and I usually just leave it there. There may be times you want to move it. You can change from a satin stitch to a blanket stitch for your cover stitch. Notice it left the settings the same as it was for the um, satin stitch. So you would have a very tight satin stitch. I'm going to change it for this to 2.5 width and 2.5 spacing. You can play with that to get the, cover, the look you would like. You also have the option of not using a cover stitch. Um, it would just stitch it down with a straight stitch and that might be good for something that doesn't fray like ultra suede if you're appliquing that. Um, notice when I change to the blanket stitch my offset changed to the inside. Again that's a default and I just leave it there. And I'm ready to go now so I click OK. I'm going to zoom in on the elephant so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay, because I have shrunk my screen down for recording purposes, my toolbars are going to look different than yours. I can click on my little arrow here, and there is the auto applique tool. If I click on it, and I'm going to go ahead and use the green, so hopefully you can see, I need to start working from the back, just like if I was doing applique manually. Whatever's furthest back needs to go down first. And I'm just going to use right and left clicks and digitize the ears. And when I applique, doesn't matter how I'm appliquing, I always want some underlap, so I'm not trying to get things to butt up exactly. And I should, okay, there's my first piece, and I can just keep going. Right and left clicks for the other ear. And now, Notice when I press enter, it doesn't finish it. If you look down here, it's saying enter point one on boundary. I can choose those points if I want to, or I can let the software do it for me. And I usually just let the software do it for me because I'm going to stitch these out usually one time for a quilt block or something. I'm not selling them, so I press enter and it takes three times if you want the, the software to choose for you. Okay, my next piece is his head. Enter, 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 enter. And there's the next piece. And then his trunk would be next. And 
it doesn't really matter where you start entering on these because if you let the software choose for you it's going to decide where is the best place to start stitching these and enter 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 okay at this point you can see that I have cover stitches that are underneath here and it would be really obvious if you were using a satin stitch you'd start seeing a hump through there and we can get rid of that very easily this is all applique right now so I could hold down control and use my select object tool and select all the objects or I could say control A on the keyboard to select everything and now there's another tool right below the auto applique tool and since I have applique selected my partial applique is available now if I click on that the, the software is going to think for a minute and it took away all those extra cover stitches that were underneath other pieces I'm going to escape so nothing selected and at this point I could go ahead and add his eyes I'm going to zoom in again and I'm going to use the block digitizing tool And the block digitizing tool is like there's gum on your cursor and you just bounce back and forth enter and rather than creating another one I'm going to use the mirror merge horizontal it's not exactly in the same spot but you wouldn't know that when you were done okay there he is and there are jump stitches and stuff but remember when you're doing applique the machine is going to have to stop anyway for the placement line and then it will start again to do your cover stitch and if you have the if you're using a satin stitch in fact let's just change this control a and I'm going to deselect the eyes go up into object properties and change to a satin stitch and my width I can leave it at 2.5 or I could go to 3 if you get too narrow then you start having um, frayed edges that show through. Notice my offset went back and if I say tack down and I add a cutting line and say OK, it added a whole bunch more color changes because it's doing more steps now. And that's what he would look like satin stitch, like the blanket stitch. Um, I could get rid of my picture now, delete, go back to the design view and there's one thing that a lot of people overlook and that is what we can do with the um, print menu for the applique file print and when that opens click on the options box and this is where you would print your templates if you're trying to position stuff but there's an option down here called applique patterns if I click OK and then I'll just do preview so you can see it here's my applique design and if I click on next page there are each of the pattern pieces exactly the size I need as long as you left this at actual size um, and you can trace them on fusible web here and go iron it to the back of your applique fabric and then if you stitch out the placement lines it should fit exactly if you're careful right in those placement lines and I keep a little iron beside my machine and an ironing surface and I press each of those pieces down as I go and I get better results that way close I hope that made it a little bit clearer there's there's more you can do with it but that's if you know this much then you can get a design in and it's quick and it's easy really